Hi, everybody. I'm super excited for us to get started on NixCon 2024. And I just want to give a huge round of applause for this actually happening. So this is amazing. And I do hope your hands are still cold. I know it might get warmer throughout the day. We're going to do like two more rounds of applause because the second one, I'm not actually going to name everybody on this list. And there's many more beyond this list. But I don't know how many of you have now been able to participate in organizing a NixCon. It's fun in retrospect. <laughs> so really huge, you know, I really want to clap for the folks that made this happen. This is quite insane to make it happen. I'm sure they've lost a lot of hours of sleep. They've been, I mean, I'm not sure. I saw them lose a lot of hours of sleep. Uh, Berber literally was carrying 500 shirts. There's a meme about it now uh, yesterday. So a huge round of applause to everyone that actually took part in making this happen. So thank you guys. Thank you, Berber Lasselis and the whole crew. And the last thing that's wild is that I think, I think this NixCon officially broke records. So if you look around, this is 400 people at NixCon in Berlin. And it's not like we, you know, there's some conferences that take you to a beach in Portugal. We don't take you to beaches in Portugal. We take you to Berlin. I told you I'll have a Berlin joke. Uh, I'm totally kidding. Berlin is awesome. But thank you, everybody, for coming all the way here. You're going to have three full days of just Nick's and Nick's talks. And just imagine all the folks that traveled here and actually spent so much time making that content to show you. So thank you to all of you. And thank you for being here. And that's like my final round of applause. Um, so I really want to kind of speed through this because we don't have that much time, but I think this one was really important for me. I was like, okay, Nick's and my mom, what does that even mean? There's goulash on the screen, it's veggie. Um, I, think, I think it was this year that I was the first time that I think I was able to explain Nick's to my mom, right? And I always felt like that person doing stuff. It's like, yeah, I have one son, he's doing Nick's. Um, and the way I think I kind of did this, and I don't know if anyone landed on it, was I, I actually compared it to cooking, right? I told her, Remember, like, great-grandma, it was like 1920s, 30s in Europe, uh, questionable times, and then, and then she made a really good goulash that was passed down in terms of recipes. And before she passed away, we actually sat down with her and we went piece by piece in that recipe book of how do you make that goulash that we all love? And we still make it but it doesn't taste the same. It doesn't work in our pots. Uh, and pretty much what the comparison here is, I told her, imagine just you had this thing, this magical cookbook where you put the recipe in it, just like you had that recipe, but instead of going to the supermarket and buying the zucchini and the paprika, you go to, you know, you magically appear a zucchini, the same zucchini that grew in the ground with the same nutrients back in Europe that our grandma used to make that goulash. And then it works the same way in every pot because then we get that great grandma's goulash. So I still don't think she understands what I do, but I, I just like it. So thought to share it with you guys. Now going into what's important for me, this is the biggest sole focus for me for the past about year. And this is kind of where I'm opening and I really hope that this ends up being something that everyone here thinks about. For me, I, I call it a sustainable nix. So it's not, I, I'm really bad with naming things. I name them literally because I want nix to be sustainable. So look at that. Yeah. Um, what sustainable nix means to me is that, is that actually in the past, I was thinking a lot about growth. I was like, how do we grow as a community? How do we get to a 400 person NixCon? Uh, and then I realized I don't, I don't think about growth the same way I used to. I now think about growth in a way of like, how do we make Nick sustainable for our entire community? And I'll touch a few points here, but I also wanna talk about how I think growth for me is not about numbers anymore, it's about the growth in our community. And I think that everyone, I hope, I can say personally, I see that every time I interact everywhere now with folks here in the room and outside of this room in our Nick's community, right? We're seeing that in how we talk to each other, we're seeing that how we're giving benefit of the doubt to each other, and we're just seeing that growth inside of the entire ecosystem, and I think that's what I really care about today. Now, again, I'm a whiz at graphics, so don't be too appalled by this. Uh, someone said Nick's build, so I obviously also took that joke. Uh, for me, Sustainable Nick's has the triangle of community love. Uh, nothing is more important than the other, except for contributors, I think, that's what at the end of the day matters the most, but it's a triangle, so everyone has a corner. 
Uh, we need to think sustainably about three areas, I believe. One is indeed contributors. That's all of you here, all of you online, all of the Nix folks everywhere, that's us. How do we make Nix sustainable? How do we make Nix a good place for contributors that are contributing today, all of us? And how do we make it a good place for contributors that are coming in tomorrow to hopefully at some point replace us, help us, support us? That's a big question. And that's something that I think we are thinking about a lot and I'd love the community's you know, power kind of to think about it as well. The second area is governance. Why, right? For me, this is necessarily the boring side of governance. It's about giving and empowering the folks who are doing the work, who also have the accountability and all the pressure to have the power to make decisions and move us forward. And again, this all ties back to how do we do this in a sustainable way, right? Avoid the burnout, support them, encourage new leaders to come in. And I, I hope folks saw in the last few months what's been going on, and we're gonna be talking about that a lot this week, this week, these next few days, with the NCA and the steering committee and all of that, uh, which I think is, is just incredible. And the last thing is resources. So in the past, I've spoken about how, okay, we need more money. It's not just about the money. It's about the ecosystem that sits underneath everything and provides us the nutrients so that we can go and do what we love, right? So a bit more fiscally, right? The, the side of this that is really critical is like, how do we think about having enough kind of war chest, enough capital so that we don't need to rely on anyone should anything happen for at least two years? And that's the way I think about it. So we're gonna see efforts like official Nix fundraising come up. We're gonna see different efforts and partnerships come up. And again, that's important for, for, for the sustainability around Nix. Um, one thing I just noticed is like, I just totally ran through the slides and didn't introduce myself. So by the way, I'm Ron. Uh, I do a bunch of things in the Nix OS Foundation and a bunch of things across Nix in general. And I also, uh, I also run a company called Flox where we're working on bringing Nix to work uh, to just a variety of people and helping Nix folks kind of bring it in. But I'll pause there. You'll see a bit more later. And I like goulash. So we used to show this every NixCon since we came back from COVID. And I talked about growth earlier. And when I showed this in the past, I was talking about how this is exciting. We're growing. Now I want to look at it from a different lens. And this doesn't mean that you know, folks that are watching this online, it's like we don't want you part of this community. We do. We do want you to join this community. But I think internally, as like when I look at the group here, I think of everyone here as kind of like the core Nix team, because you were crazy enough to make it all the way down here. Uh, for me, this shows that Nix is growing, but it also shows that we need to be very thoughtful about how we handle that growth. Because to me, growth is less important than making sure that we're setting ourselves up for success for the next five to 10 years. And not just for tomorrow, not just for like getting a huge post that brings in 10,000 more people or anything like that, right? And it goes from how do we ensure that NixCons happen all the time to all the way, how do we ensure that we have more contributors than users? Kind of not more contributors than users, but the ratio stays, stays same. Uh, so there's a lot of cool things happening. I mean, we, we started like NixOS 21.05 with 33,000 commits. We're, we've blasted by 70,000 commits recently. Uh, <clears throat> there's what I would call hockey stick curves of, of like engagement with Nix, Nix and the numbers I'm calling it, uh, right? We'll probably come back in like a year, two years or three years and it will actually look like a full hockey stick at some point. Uh, but it's definitely the base of it. And I'm really gonna breeze past these things because it's like, you know Nix is growing, but I just wanna make sure that we're thinking about the side of it that, that matters for the future. The other side of this is just the resource side, right? We're paying for that. We're paying for that through our S3. We're paying that Equinix and other efforts. So it's like, when this growth happens, we have to find also sustainable ways to manage it. So there's another effort that I'm, that I'm gonna be running within the foundation, and that effort is like, how do we work with corporations that are starting to base themselves on Nix? How do we enable, there's different type of contribution, right? Contribution is not just code, and I have a, a thing about it in a moment. 
there's different ways that different entities need to engage with the ecosystem. And for instance, you know, we have big companies now basing their technologies on top of NICs. How do we enable them to become contributors, whether it's through resources, through support, or through something else? Those are things that we need to think about as an ecosystem and as a core community. All right, let's see here. So Nixos Foundation, right? Uh, Nixos Foundation, I'm sure some of you have been, have been following this. I think the most exciting bit is that I wanna, I, I lied, I think I do wanna give one more hand, like kind of, kind of applause, and that's to the steering committee. So initially we started off this year and we went on this journey to say, not only do we want sustainable funding in all of these areas, we also want a sustainable ecosystem of making decisions and empowerment. And that's how the steering committee came to be, right? We created an evolution in our ecosystem where finally we're having a lot of first times. We had the first time of having an actual steering committee. Right now is the first time in Nick's history that we're having a vote. I think that's kind of wild, and I, I don't know how many folks kind of appreciate the magnitude of that event, because five years from now, you're gonna be in NixCon, and people are gonna be like, yeah, we just had the yearly vote, and blah, 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 blah. It's gonna be so obvious. Right now, it's not, and the amount of blood, sweat, and tears that went into this from the SC is wild. So you're gonna see the SC tomorrow, you're gonna see them also throughout the day. Sorry, the NCA, the Nix Constitutional Assembly, good God. Uh, so just final round of applause for them because they've been putting six months of like crazy effort to make this happen. So thank you guys. <laughs> now, a quick run through for the Nixos Foundation. We're, I think the most exciting bit that I really do wanna call out and have kind of ingrained in everyone's memory is that this is gonna be the first time that we have a rotation, right? There was a foundation happening beforehand Ilko, Armine, Rob, folks that, I don't know, some of you may, I mean, obviously you know Ilko, he's here. Uh, but Armine and Rob, shout out to them. Then we had a new foundation that came in and started to operationalize a few things. But now we're gonna have a foundation that's gonna rotate in, and it's gonna be working directly with the steering committee that was voted in to actually appoint and rotate the new foundation members into the board. So if folks are thinking about, hey, I really like you know, my free time on Saturday, but I do want to kind of cut that down because that's too wild for me. Like, join. Uh, we actually have a lot of important work to do, and the main thing that the foundation does, and this is how I like to always summarize it, is like we keep the lights on and then we help make sure it shines brighter for whoever's working on Nix. So we handle all the things that we don't want the community to need to care about so that the community can keep working on everything Nix, keep working on the things that differentiate us in the ecosystem, and keep working on all the awesome things we're gonna see in the talks right after me. Right, so it's the legal, it's the bureaucratic, it's the financial, it's you know, the partnerships, it's everything that makes kind of the cogs well-oiled and kind of running to a certain degree. And that's what the foundation is about. I'm gonna be around for obviously the next few days, if you're interested, grab me, let's talk about it, let's sit down, and I really want to see a lot of folks interested in kind of joining as we go through this process. This is, this is my favorite quote for the year. I don't know how many of you know Peter Hitchens, but he's written a lot of books. Uh, he's kind of, for me, he's kind of like a little inspiration when I talk about open source. And my favorite quote from him is community before code. And that's what I lead with. And that's what I believe in. And I hope you know, this resonates with others. Without the community, we don't have the code. Without the community, we don't have this. And I think this is a huge part of it. Cool. Um, this is like not really interesting. I'm gonna send the deck. Things happened. You know, we funding, financial reports, all the exciting things that you guys are thinking about doing on a Saturday morning, uh, but rotation is in bold. Because this is the first time that we're doing this in official mechanism, high involvement directly from the community. Um, and like I said, I'm really happy to talk more about this after. Um, there is a big item that's coming up outside of these few other ones, other than the rotation, and it's actually our Equinix medal. So if those that were here a few years back, we, we S3 sponsorship ended, we actually did a whole really beautiful effort as a community to get it going, and then we're, having, we're gonna have to do a similar effort with Equinix medal. 
So we're gonna have to figure out kind of a way of how do we transfer the funding, how do we transfer kind of the ownership of it and make sure that that is also sustainable for us for at least five years. Uh, financials, so we create, I'm also the treasurer, but like we, we create a uh, financial transparent report. I've heard good things about it. Um, I mean, I think leading by transparency is what's it, what it's about. If you have the information, you can make better decisions. You can ask us questions. We can actually work better together. There's literally nothing to hide. So we have these fully transparent reports. You know exactly where things are coming in from, where things are going out to. Um, and if you see a private jet at some point, that's Andy, because he has a lot of money. Um, I'm going to skip this. This was kind of like the S3 effort that we did as a community. I just really like that example for us. Cool. The last few things I'm going to mention, because I think we have a lot of audience kind of also watching us, is that Nix is a really thriving and happening community. We have a lot of resources, a lot of ways to, to engage with us, and I'm going to partially over speak over the net here and speak for most of us, or all of us, engage with us. Right, we have different resources like the Discourse, the Matrix, we have Nix.dev, which is an amazing resources, resource that was donated initially by Domen and now is being community run by the Docs team who you're gonna hear from. Uh, D-O-C-S, not D-O-X, different team. Uh, and there's a lot of things to come in and be part of our community. And this kind of ties into the different Nix teams. As you're engaging with folks here and on the hack day, think about what's missing. There's a lot of different teams that you're seeing here, and there's, I'm sure there's a lot of, that I've missed of great things we can do together inside of the Nix ecosystem. So like, use NixCon as a catalyst for that, because I think that's one of the big reasons we all get together in person, other than hugs. Um, now, Sally Valentin couldn't make it. So Valentin runs a huge portion of our summer of Nix program, and I just wanted to give it a shout out. It's a huge program that's supported and funded by NGI. So NGI and Enelnet are like huge Nix supporters. I can't even speak well enough about them. I mean, an amazing team, Mikhail, Ronnie, there's a huge team behind it. And they help fund a lot of things happening inside of Nix. The program is actually mainly about bringing new people in, helping with mentors come and teach them how to Nix, and then they do a lot of packaging for different like European projects. Uh, I think this year there was, uh, they ended up packaging 35 projects where like last year it was 22. A lot of folks kind of collaborating and, and participating. And one thing that Valentin does very well beyond a lot of things he does very well is write up 10 times better reports than I do. So highly recommend checking them out. It's gonna come out, like when he promises a report, it's, it's going to be there on November 30th. When I promise a report, maybe. Um, and with that said, I'm going to invite over Pic Noir to uh, talk a little bit about the nomination team. And this is kind of the whole point of the State of the Union. You're going to hear from awesomer people than me. They're going to come on stage and talk about cool stuff. Thank you, Pic. Thank you, Ron. So I'm Pic Noir. I'm part of the moderation team. Um, yeah, so as you can see, there's been a severe rotation this year. Um, yeah, there's been, uh, last year was a bumpy run, right, for us. Uh, the previous team managed to fix some issues by, uh, I think, removing the right individuals, so things tend to be a bit chiller now. Um, so yeah, the moderation team contains Exa, Lasselus, K900, Endocrimes, uh, NIM64, and me. Uh, so this year we started to um, like assign people to more constrained area, like uh, discourse moderation, matrix moderation. Some of us are really present on matrix, some others don't. Uh, yeah, so it helped quite a lot. Um, yeah, so we recruited a new team, and uh, it turns out that this uh, this team is probably in need of. Uh, a regular rotation to function. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much for all, all, everything for us. Yeah. Ah. Awesome. And again, I don't know how much people realize, I think the moderation team is the most thankless job ever. So if you're seeing things happen and there's no commotion, it's because there's someone behind the scene, probably this guy and five others, that are just like bleeding and sweating. So, empathy. 
So we heard that um, yeah, Nix has a lot of machinery around and someone needs to keep this engine running. So we have the infra team that um, manages the builder and the cache infrastructure and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we have um, had a few um, rotation as well in our team. Um, and there was also a little bit of a phase where not much happened in the infra team because like uh, some people left and then it took uh, takes some time to get new people on boarded. So I'm also, yeah, I'm MiG-92, I'm also uh, joined the infra team lately. And um, yeah, I want to yeah, use this opportunity to like ask um, the community also to um, help us um, joining this. So for example, we have currently uh, Hexa, um, Vladimir and K900 uh, working a lot on um, uh, getting uh, staging builds running um, and also keeping Hydra up to date. Um, and yeah, but we have a lot of to-dos to, to solve in the um, near um, future. Uh, our biggest one is uh, reducing the binary cache size. Um, so we have uh, two options there that we um, are yeah, evaluating and then um, we will hopefully uh, reduce the cost of all of that. We also have some uh, problems because um, Nix packages is a little bit a victim of its own success. When you have a lot of packages, you also need to build them somehow, and then you run into scaling issues with DCI. Um, so yeah, we uh, need to uh, fix some stuff in Hydra, for example, to make this working. And then also we have uh, some transition in the build infrastructure because um, Equinet's metal will um, in future no longer um, be available to us, so we need to find then also new resources for that. Um, yeah, so you see there's like a lot of two things to do and um, yeah, we have um, weekly meetings every other Tuesday. It's best if you want, if you're interested in uh, joining this work, there's a matrix channel, uh, infranixas.org. Um, so I would invite, uh, like, I would invite you to go there and then maybe also join up in the channels and see if you yeah, want to help on any of these tasks. Thank you. And one, one thing I do want to mention is that folks thinking about the infra team, other than like just pure goodwill, imagine how many opportunities you're going to have to kind of work at this magnitude, at this scale, just because you're awesome and have time to volunteer. So just think about that as well when you're doing it. All right, test, test. Hello, um, I'm Infinisil. Uh, I'm Infinisil, might have heard of me. Um, so tomorrow at 9 a.m., very early, uh, especially for me, we in the next Constitutional Assembly will have a panel where we talk about community values, governance, uh, the Constitution we've written, the steering committee, um, stuff like that, and the ongoing election. If you have a question for that, uh, go to this link and write it down so we might get to it. Um, also, if someone could send that link on the Matrix channel. By the way, there's Matrix channel. If you haven't joined that, a lot of things being talked there. Um, Yes, so we'll hear from that tomorrow. Uh, in other news, I want to talk a bit about Next Packages automation. Um, so we have a merge button now for Next Packages. Uh, if your package is in Packages by name, if you have the automated update PRs working with uh, the our Ryan TM bot, then you can just, if you're a maintainer, you can issue this uh, comment uh, like on the right hand side and the bot will merge it for you. So big shout out to Mick92, who was just on stage before me, and Lasselus, and uh, for establishing that, and then also Script Kitty for helping out with maintenance. So thank you. <laughs> Something else is last year at NextCon, I talked about the packages by name effort. Uh, so we introduced that, trying to get rid of uh, all packages on Next. I'm happy to say that. Uh, the size of all packages of Nix has gone down in the last year. And the number of packages in packages by name has, has gone up. And we, we, the number of new packages just keeps growing. So that's a very good sign. We still need to do like a mass migration. Uh, we'll get to that at some point. Um, but the, how it's implemented is in a separate tool. Uh, it's called Nix Packages Vet. Hopefully can ha has some more use cases than just this packages by name thing. And it's written in Rust, uh, maintained by Philip Terran, me, and Will Bush. Um, it's a very, it's in a good state. This code base. So if you wanna, if you wanna write Rust and help out, contribute, uh, very welcome to. We have also formatting. So in the last year, a an RFC to standardize an official format for Nix has been passed. And um, yeah, so we have a formatting team that takes care of that. We have. Uh, Nix FMT, it's a code base adjusted from Seracel's original Nix FMT. It's, it's different though. 
Um, we're already enforcing that for new files and already formatted files in next packages. Uh, still need to do a tree-wide uh, reformat coming soon, TM. Uh, so, uh, still need to figure out some kinks, like we're, being, we're working on it, uh, like a meeting every second week to slowly keep the churn going. Um, yes, then something else, and that's a very recent thing. Uh, some of you might have known here that for a number of years, if you picked the wrong base branch for a PR in Next packages, you might end up pinging like 100 people. And that's terrible. Uh, that's fixed now. I worked on this uh, recently. And uh, if, you, if you do that, you now get this uh, message here, which tells you exactly how you can kind of figure out the PR, how you can make it work after all. Um, yeah, and so I also want to give a thank to uh, Tweak and Antithesis for uh, enabling me to work on these things, like the code nurse things, the Nix FMT and, and the packages by name thing. Couldn't do it without them, so thank you. And uh, that's it for me, I think. Yes. Very sad. We're By the slowly... way, we, we gave you five extra, okay. but we're still tight on time. Okay, so Tom, <laughs> run, run, run. Run. All right, um, marketing team. Uh, basically, uh, we need more help. Uh, we have a few people who have done some good work with uh, rewriting the website, kind of trying to uh, migrate that over with Cleobeck. And um, so basically, yeah, so basically, that's what we need is uh, more participation, more work. Uh, Ida's done a lot of good work with uh, maintaining up the socials. So if you're interested in kind of socials and making that kind of a more robust thing, then uh, we can make that happen. So reach out to us and that's it. Oh, <laughs> I have to be right here. <laughs> okay, um, but that's the rundown. Uh, sorry, we don't have uh, much more than that. Um, come reach out to us, join the marketing team. Yay. Good. All right. So we're going to speed through this. There's actually some, uh, there was actually a thing here, Tom, uh, says things. The, there's, there's a little bit about the Knicks team. Uh, they, they actually put this together, but in the sake of time, uh, I'll just call it out. There's a lot of teams that want you guys to participate. You're going to have the chance to work with some of the most amazing people I've ever worked with in my life. And, and I think that's what's you all should be thinking about and then contributing to probably the most, not probably, I mean, this is the most amazing project in the world. Um, so there's Nick's team, lots of stuff going on. There's also the documentation team that would love some help. So I'm going to speed through this because I do want to kind of make sure that we uh, get to the rest of the folks that created a lot of awesome stuff. And also, obviously, release management. Uh, let's go. Let's do this. Uh, where's the mic? There you go. Grab it. Go, go, go. Can you go back to the documentation side? Oh yeah, just go click click back. Hello? Yeah. Perfect. Good. Um Yeah, documentation team. Uh quick update from the documentation team. Um so we have this RC for doc comments in the uh, Nix code, which was merged um, last year. And now the um, uh, behavior of doc comments is officially uh, specified and accepted. And we have a yeah, partially implemented in uh, the Nix runtime. We could need some help there. And we also need help with migrating and documenting all the functions in Nix packages. Um, and Here's an example how uh, the uh, document um, should look like. So we have the additional star on the multi-line comments. And um, yeah, you can easily find um, undocumented functions with a search engine, which is called Noogle, if you know that. Um, there's now a button that you can press on Noogle and you will come to a random undocumented function. And if you know the function, then please go ahead and uh, document it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. No, I, don't need... I got like 60 seconds. Let's do this because we have more interesting talks coming up. Release management, that's the thing. Survey recap, 2,300 people. Guillaume, 
is an insanely successful person that is actually going through all of this data and caring about it and then translating it to all of us. So watch for this. This is going to come up very soon. Guillaume, thank you. He hasn't had a chance to be here. Um, and the most important growth for me this year was that last next con, this is my dog. I rescued a puppy. They were like, this dog is going to be 20 kilograms. That's a lie. This dog is 50 kilograms. Uh, here's me with a bear. Uh, I'm speeding through this, obviously. The last thing we did is that, that last NixCon, we did a Nix ICO. We've always been talking about how crypto is the next thing. There are Nix coins now. There are pogs. They're around here somewhere. Find people. They'll give you a pog. It's cool. It lets me know where you live. It tracks you. Uh, <laughs> where to next? So lots of things are happening, and Chris would kill me if this wasn't on the screen. There's lots more places to talk about Nix. Go talk about them. Config Management Camp, FOSDEM. There's going to be Ocean Sprint, and there's going to be Tiger Sprint. There's like Nix is happening all over. We're like little groups of people that drink all of the town's beer, apparently. That's kind of what we do. And um, I don't know if that's what we're known for. So anyways, uh, this is from the first NixCon after COVID. Thank you, guys. We're going to have three amazing days. And have a good time. Thank you. That's it.